What happens when a nation realizes its mistake? When the mistake is big, like decoupling from China, the nations repent. They want to fix their mistakes by economic and trade dialogue. But can they make any difference? The EU was very excited to de-risk China. From far away, this looked like an adventurous stunt. The EU didn't know what was about to happen. But as soon as the trade relations ended and the EU's economy was left alone on its own, it figured out what problem it had welcomed. China is ready to end any conflict, but this comes with terms that the West is not used to following. It must stay away from taking the U.S. side and stop providing a battleground for the U.S. to fight a world war with China. But can the EU do it for its economy? Let's find out. Welcome back to another exciting episode of our channel. Innovation Diary brings you China's innovation stories, projects, and growing influence in different parts of the world. If you are new to the channel and enjoy learning about fast-paced modernity, especially China's development and growing power, you will find our videos intriguing. In this video, we will discuss why the EU wants to collaborate with China after what it did. We will also talk about China's response. Watch the video till the very end to know if the EU can get China back with small efforts. Let's get started. The EU-China relations are not very good to talk about, but new achievements are made, making headlines like the China-U reunion. But how true is the news of this reunion? On September 25, 2023, the 10th China-EU high-level economic and trade dialogue call happened in Beijing, signaling a significant step in strengthening economic ties between these two global economic powerhouses. Amidst the challenges posed by the pandemic, economic pressures, and geopolitical tensions, this dialogue provides a platform for China and the European Union to address their differences through face-to-face -face discussions. But why the EU wants to address problems in face-to-face -face discussion remains a question, and we will answer that later in this video. Co-chaired by Chinese Vice Premier He Lifeng and the Executive Vice President of the European Commission, Valdis Dombrovskis, this dialogue seeks to find practical solutions to trade barriers, supply chain disruptions, and investment considerations. But what are the challenges that can surface in this discussion, and what will be the potential implications of global economic cooperation? The 10th China-EU High-Level Economic and Trade Dialogue is more than just another diplomatic meeting. It's a key moment in the economic relationship between two of the world's largest economic entities. To understand its significance, it's essential to examine the broader context. China and the European Union are economic giants, and their economic relations have a global impact. The EU is China's largest trading partner, and China is the EU's second largest trading partner. This robust economic relationship is portrayed by trade in goods and services, foreign direct investment, and collaborative projects spanning various industries. But one thing to consider here is the economy of both nations. China is doing pretty well when it comes to the economy, but the EU has suffered in recent times. It has faced many hardships, and what's worse is EU-China tensions. The problem between the EU and China is not caused by their own mistakes. Rather, the EU is fighting someone else's war. It has provided a battleground to China and the U.S. war. Not only that, it has facilitated the U.S. by all means, making EU-China relations problematic. According to The Guardian, most Europeans believe that the EU and China tensions are because of the U.S.'s rivalry with China. But it seems like the EU wants to fix many things. But what are the challenges that need a quick fix? Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, Please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel for more videos about China's development, power, and influence on the world. Let's continue now. The COVID-19 pandemic had a profound impact on global trade and economic relations. Disruptions in supply chains, restrictions on international travel, and economic contractions were felt worldwide. China and the EU were not immune to these challenges, but they managed to navigate them with varying degrees of success. The 10th China-EU High-Level Economic and Trade Dialogue is a symbol of their determination to recover and strengthen their economic ties in a post-pandemic world. Apart from that, one of the primary objectives of this dialogue is to address trade barriers and supply chain disruptions. The pandemic exposed vulnerabilities in global supply chains, and both China and the EU recognize the need for resilience and stability. By working together, they can find solutions to enhance the efficiency and reliability of supply chains. The EU's de-risking plans were also discussed in the meeting. The EU's efforts to de-risk Chinese companies and investments have raised concerns in China. These actions include investigations into Chinese electric vehicles, 
and considerations regarding alternative sources for critical components like lithium-ion batteries and fuel cells. While the EU may view these measures as safeguards for its economic security, experts see them as potential barriers to investment. This dialogue was an opportunity to address these concerns and find common ground. The experts are saying that the EU's de-risking plans are highly influenced by the U.S. If you remove the U.S. from the scene, all problems between China and the EU will end. But while the EU is willing to fix things, the experts suggested that there will be a few challenges to overcome. And this is because the recent actions by the EU have raised eyebrows in China. Investigations into Chinese electric vehicles, concerns about dependence on Chinese-made components, and foreign direct investment reviews have all contributed to a sense of uncertainty for Chinese businesses. In response, China has emphasized the importance of providing a fair, non-discriminatory, and transparent business environment. However, the EU's motives are an attempt to gain leverage in economic negotiations. Both parties must address these concerns and build trust. While safeguarding economic interests is legitimate, open dialogue can lead to mutually beneficial solutions. The EU should not accept China to help it without it doing nothing in return. China does not want any help, but it wants the EU to stop helping the U.S. in the Cold War. It will only ultimately impact the EU. The highlight of this dialogue includes not only the pandemic, but also geopolitical tensions. The relationship between China and the EU exists in a complex global context, with evolving dynamics in the Asia-Pacific region, transatlantic relations, and China's Belt and Road Initiative. These geopolitical factors can influence the tone and outcomes of economic discussions. China and the EU must carefully navigate these geopolitical challenges to ensure that their economic cooperation remains a priority and should be overshadowed by other issues. But what can the EU do on its part to fix things? Firstly, the EU has to stop facilitating the U.S. war. And with that, many options to make EU and China relations better will appear as they move forward. While challenges exist, there are also significant opportunities for collaboration. Digital and green technologies represent areas where both China and the EU can benefit from cooperation. The transition to a more sustainable, digitalized future is a global imperative and collaboration in these sectors can drive innovation and economic growth for both parties. Digital cooperation can encompass areas like 5G technology, artificial intelligence, and data privacy standards. Green cooperation may involve renewable energy projects, environmental standards, and sustainable infrastructure development. Despite recent challenges and uncertainties, the EU remains China's second largest trading partner. As of the first eight months of 2023, Bilateral trade, while slightly down year-on-year, year, remains substantial. This statistic highlights the dependence of the European economies on China. Maintaining robust trade ties is not only economically advantageous, but also contributes to global economic stability, and de-risking is not something that experts are suggesting. The European Union Chamber of Commerce in China supports a proactive engagement approach. Rejecting calls for disengagement, it urges the EU to maintain a balanced strategy that considers both existing and emerging priorities and challenges. Striking the right balance between collaboration and competition is essential for fostering a healthy economic relationship. Despite a global decrease in foreign direct investment FDI, European companies continue to focus on the Chinese market due to its growth potential. Data shows a significant increase in FDI from countries like France, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and Germany. This highlights China's attractiveness as an investment destination for European businesses. As economic relations between China and the EU evolve, it's essential to recognize the role of investment in driving economic growth, innovation, and job creation. The 10th China-EU High-Level Economic and Trade Dialogue builds upon the foundation laid during the 9th Dialogue in July 2022. During that meeting, both sides committed to promoting practical cooperation on economic and trade issues and addressing global economic challenges together. The 10th China-EU High-Level Economic and Trade Dialogue represents a critical point in the relationship between these two economic giants. As they face common challenges, they must work together to find pragmatic solutions and deepen cooperation in various sectors. The outcome of this dialogue not only has implications for their economies, but also for the broader global economic landscape. By embracing a collaborative approach and addressing their differences constructively, China and the EU can set an example for others and contribute to a more stable and prosperous world economy. The significance of this dialogue goes beyond immediate economic benefits. 
it will continue to provide cooperation and mutual benefit in an interconnected world. We would like to take a moment here and appreciate you all for commenting and sharing your opinions. Your insights always impress us. Do you think China shouldn't work with the EU and make it learn a lesson? What if China never opens the gate of collaboration to the EU? Will its economy be able to remain stable? Let us know in the comments section why you think the West relies a lot on China and can't work on its initiatives like de-risking. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing and growing its influence over the world. Until the next video, stay tuned.